Okay, um, so what I'm doing here is uh, going through a review of engineering economics. Uh, and, and the reason we're doing this is because we want to um, get to a, a quantity that's talked about in the books, and that's, that's called the um, levelized cost of energy. But there's, a, there's an engineering economic uh, element embedded in here, so I thought I'd take a few minutes, maybe a half hour at most, to go through this um, examples in engineering economics. You've probably had this before, and if so, that's great. Don't feel like you have to go through the whole thing. Okay. Okay, good. Here it is. So, um, essentially, engineering economics uh, describes this element called the time value of money. Uh, and simply put, uh, it, asks, it answers the question, um, what's more valuable, $100 in your pocket right now or the promise of $100 a year from now? And the answer is uh, now. It, it, that's more valuable because you can get the utility or services that that $100 could buy now. Say it's a, um, you want to buy a new calculator. Well, $100 a year from now doesn't help you. You need it today to buy that calculator. And, and what you get, the difference between the two, is that you get the services that calculator would provide over the course of the year. And that's what's really important. So given the fact that money has, uh, has value different at, depending on the time, uh, how do you calculate that? How do you put that into, into an engineering formula? And that's what engineering economics is about. How's that related to energy? Well, you know, these, these um, facilities that produce electricity cost a lot of money. Uh, and they service, uh, they provide the services over a long period of time. Um, and sometimes they, they create a lot of kilowatt hours to be sold. Sometimes they only create a few or relative few. Um, so how do you combine that up? How do you, how do you um, answer that? So um, how do you spread the cost, that capital cost, upfront cost, over the whole lifetime of um, of the uh, of the facility, and that's really where we're going to. That's the part that where that fits into the levelized cost of energy. So lesson one, really simple, in simple interest on a um, on a deposit, um, and that's what happens. You you put money in the bank. They don't put it in a vault. They um, they use that money and invest it to make other money for themselves, but they pay you interest for that privilege. So you take money to the bank. Say you've got a thousand dollars put it in a savings account, um, and it pays 2% interest annually. So beginning, year zero, you put $1,000 in. A year from now, 2% back, it's $20. So now they either give you the $20, or more typically they'll re deposit it back into that account. So a year later, you've got $1,020 in your account. Keep it in for another year, your interest is now more than $20, it's $20.40 because you're making interest on the interest. Now you've got $1,040.20, and so on. So using that process, the question I want to ask is, how long will it take before you have $1,200 in your account? So I want you to work it out for yourself. Go ahead and pause, vid pause the video. Think about it. Pull out your calculator, scratch pad, if you're really feeling kind of fancy, pull out your spreadsheet and it's pretty easy to do that. Make that repetitive calculation until your balance gets above um, $1,200. So go ahead and pause and, um, and do that. Really, I want you to go ahead and do it. I'm not making that up. So pause it, go ahead and figure it out, and we'll wait. Okay, so I'm assuming you did that. Here's the answer. Um, it's 10 years, a little less than 10 years. So I just basically, I did it in a spreadsheet. You go through, I can, you can see how this um, balance increases over time. Uh, at the end of eight years, you have $1,171. You can also see that the interest gets a little bit bigger over time because um, you're getting interest on your interest. So the biggest one at the end of 10 years, you've got to check for $23.90 as opposed to the $20 one. It's kind of a simple example, not a lot of money, but um, for bigger values, you get bigger money. So it, it adds up. So it's a little tedious, right? If you did it by hand, you got the calculator and scratch pad and, or a spreadsheet, and it's a lot of, lot of work. Excuse me, getting a little dry here. 
but there's an easier way. So um, let's let's do a little let's um, let's go on to lesson two in this series, and that is um, um, interest factors and interest tables. And to do that, we're going to take a look at the math. Okay, so here's here's a little math. So let's uh, define a few a few um, variables. P zero is that amount that thousand dollars you put in the bank. I is the interest rate, and we'll express that as a decimal, not as a percentage. So it's two percent. That means zero point zero two. And so um, after year one, we get P sub one out of that variable, and so P sub one says. It's equal to the original plus i interest rate times p0, or doing a little algebra, it's 1 plus i quantity times p0. At the end of year 2, well, p2 is equal to whatever you had at the end of year 1 plus the interest of what you had at the end of year 1. Substitute this quantity in for each of these pi's. You get i plus 1 p0 plus i times 1 plus i p0 figure all that out, you get this thing i squared plus 2i plus 1 times p0, which is, you should recognize, the square of the polynomial i plus 1. So p2 is equal to i plus 1 squared. p1 is equal to i plus 1. Now we're seeing a pattern, right? So over time, for any given nth year, the amount of money you'd have is i plus 1 raised to the nth power times p0. Now, it's the convention in these calculations to not use this subscript, sub n, uh, but just give that time, that, that amount you'd have down in the future, just a different variable, and it's called f. So in general, for a deposit of a p amount, a present amount, at um, an interest rate given by i over n periods, uh, the f, the future value, is equal to i plus 1 quantity n times p. So this is called the interest factor for that. The formula is pretty easy, uh, though as we get up further along, some of the formulas are a little, a little messier. Though with today's calculators, it's not that big a deal. And in fact, these formulas all show up in spreadsheet formulas as well. But historically, we've used tables. We've used what we call the interest tables. And interest tables uh, tabulate these factors for many different interest rates, many different periods. And this particular factor is called the F slash P factor. Um, and the way that it's represented this way is this little arrangement here. There's the mathematical definition of it. And we read that as saying f given p at interest i for n periods. So f given p is what we'll call that, that, that factor. And then we use it, and this is how we use it in, in, a, in an equation, right? f, some future one, is equal to this factor, f given p at i and n times p. Um, and, and note that that short end makes sense. In other words, this f given p, as, as you might also think of that as a, um, uh, a fraction, right? f over p. And you'll see here that if this p is in the denominator, you multiply times that p, they sort of cancel each other out, right? Leaving the f behind, which is what you get. So think of it as like canceling units or just doing the math. Um, and, and that's consistent as we develop more factors. It shows up more and more. Okay. So what I've got here is a little picture of a one page of an interest table. I'll, I have that PDF of this particular interest table for a bunch of different interest factors loaded into the, the Blackboard website. You'll see it in the same place you found this video. Um, so, so we've got here different pages for different interest rates. This happened to be the interest rate for 2%. Um, what we have here is a long list. I only see the beginning of it for number of periods. There's the end. And we have many, each column is a different factor. And here we'll see that first one is that F given P called the compound uh, amount factor, F given P. So here's another exercise. Um, let's do the same thing. Say, what will we have um, after 10 years if we put $1,000 in the bank? Um, but now let's use the um, the interest table to do that. Okay, so um, we know that that future one would be F given P, 2% rate over 10 years times P, um, $1,000. But let's go ahead and look into the interest table and find that out. So either you could use either the, the image I have on the slide two slides ago, or you can go into Blackboard, download the PDF, and take a look at it. 
Um, either way, it's fine. Please go ahead and do it. Um, again, I want you to pause the video and go ahead and do that just because I want you to go through that experience. Okay? You did it? Okay, so here's that same screenshot. Uh, here's the F given P factor. Remember, it's the 2% interest rate. Uh, I want to go to number of periods 10, and here's the number 1.219. Uh, so, and if you remember that, when you multiply our deposit, 1,000 times 1 1.219, you get exactly the same number we got with our hand calculations, $1,219. Uh, and so that's nice. It's good to know that um, we get the same answer both ways. We get a little confidence in our results that way. Okay. Um, so, so that's a, that's the the beginning, the introduction. But really, the the strength of this and what we're going to be using in this class is um, is is comparing a, a present amount with a series of periodic uniform payments. Um, so we we represented a present amount with P. The uniform payments we represent with the letter A. Uh, it comes from annual, but we'll see as we go through these examples. It doesn't necessarily mean every year, but but we'll we call it A. Series uniform payments, and so the factors we look at are A given F, A given P, and then their inverses. So A given F is answers the question, what would be the uniform payment stream that some period in advance in, in the future will result in some future amount, some target future amount? Um, say, and so if you're trying to say save up for um, a down payment on a house, you know, and we know how much you want to have at the end of, say, three years, this would tell you how much you have to put in every year to come up to that amount given certain interest payments, interest um, rate on your on your savings account. Um, a given P is the, is, is, is the um, factor you'd use to calculate uh, a loan payment. So P is the amount of the loan, A is the, the payment over time. And then we can look at the other way around, F given A, P given A. In other words, if you know how much you can afford, what size of payment you can afford, those can tell you how much uh, either you'll have in the future or what kind of loan you can take out. Okay, so here's a car loan, and let's start with uh, this. It's a thirty-five thousand car loan. Let's say it's six percent interest, uh, and it's a five-year loan, five-year term. So the question is, what's the annual payment on the loan? And just want to point out, I said annual, right? Nobody pays an annual payment on a car loan, but bear with me. Let's let's just do this one example. Um, a given so the factor we're looking for is a given p, six percent, five years. $35,000, you go ahead and look it up, and I encourage you to maybe take some time, go back into there, look at the 6% page, find that number, but I found it was 0.2374. That means the annual payment is $8,309. So if you were to pay, write a check at the end of every year for $8,309 at the end of five years, you'd have paid it off. But of course, that's not what we do, right? We pay monthly. So one, if you do one twelfth of that, um, Actually, I have my calculator handy, so let me do that right away. Encourage you to do that too. A three zero nine. So it's about six hundred ninety-two dollars a month. That's a that's a sizable um, uh, car payment. Six hundred and ninety-two. Okay. But let's say we wanted to calculate what the monthly was. Okay. It, and, and dividing the annual by twelve gets you an approximation. Turns out it's a little on the high side. Let's walk through and find this out. Well, we can interpret those interest tables just differently. So, so N, no, instead of saying it's number of years, it's the number of months. So a five-year term ends up being 60 months. So let's say N equals 60. But we have to adjust the interest rate accordingly as well. Remember, the interest rate was 6%. Well, that's per year. So per month, it's a twelfth of that. So it's really a half a percent, which is 6 divided by 12. And now we have a new calculation, a new factor, A given P for one half interest rate, and there is a table for one half percent. 60 terms, 60 periods, and that, is, that um, factor is 0 0.0193, 35,000. That ends up being $675. Now remember, one twelfth of the annual payment was 692. This is 675. So, like I said, it's a little bit lower because on an annual payment, you're paying interest on that balance over the entire year, which didn't change. Here, you're paying it a little bit at a time, and every time you make a payment, the balance gets a little bit lower and a little bit lower. So, those interest rate, the amount of interest in, embedded in that payment later, is less than the amount of interest embedded up front, and so you end up having to pay less. 
Okay, so here's another exercise for you. Um, what's the monthly payment on a mortgage of $120,000? So, bought, it, bought your first home, and you got 6% interest. It's a little high, but, you know, go with it. Go with me. Work with me for a little bit. Um, and, and find two different calculations, one for a 10-year term and one for a 30-year term. So go ahead, pause the video, do it again, look it up, go through the interest tables and come up with those two numbers. What's the payment for a $120,000 loan, 6% rate for a 10-year term and for a 30-year term? Go ahead and do it. Okay, so here's the answer. For, so for a 30-year term, um, and, and we're, we want the monthly payment, it's a um, uh, 360 periods. 6% rate, uh, that goes to half percent again, and go into that interest table, you'll find there is indeed an N equals 360 way down at the bottom. Um, 0 0.006 is the, um, the factor, so that means the, 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 um, the monthly payment is $720. Um, not all that different from the car payment, it turns out, um, but it's a much longer term, obviously. It's uh, 30 years. So now let's go ahead and do it again for the 10-year um, term. So that's 120 periods, still half percent, and ends up being 1,332. And, and it's worth taking a few minutes to look at this, right? 1,332 uh, is almost twice what the um, the first payment was, 720, but it's only a third of the term. Okay, so I'd expect you'd expect it to be maybe three times as high. But this talks again, really drives home this idea of the time value of money by shortening the term of the loan to a third of the time. You only have to you, your 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 payment goes up, but only by a factor of two, not by a factor of three, and that gives you a sense of how much money you're actually saving by being more aggressive at paying off a loan instead of doing it over a three-year period, do it over a thirty-year period, do it over a ten-year period, save a whole boatload of money. Okay, so so what you might be interested in is how about a 15-year term because um, that's a, a typical term. 10-year terms are a little rare, though uh, they do have them. Um, and it turns out this particular table that I found for you, uh, they don't have n equals 100 or 180, which is a 15-year term uh, per month. So you can actually go, can always go to the equations, right? And and you can look it up. And again, I've got this PDF of all these equations uh, downloaded in the same area of the blackboard, but for this A given P factor, it's equal to this arrangement of I's and N's. Um, and again, when you use these equations, I is expressed as a decimal, not as a percentage. So it's not 5, it's 0 0.05. You'd be amazed how easy it is to make that mistake. Uh, and I speak from some experience there. So 0 0.05 is what you put in there. So you can go ahead and do that as well. Um, there are other interest factors uh, that get you from F to P and, and so on. Um, and, and none of these are going to be terribly important for this class. And if you've had engineering economics, you know what these are. Um, you'll probably want a review form if you're going to sit for the FE exam sometime soon. Uh, but that's, that's for another time. So I'll just leave you with one problem. I won't even give you the answer. You're on your own. This is the end of the video. Um, how much would you have to invest today at 6% interest to have an, a nest egg of 500000 in 20 years? So what lump sum would you just put in this bank? Somebody guarantees you, say, a bond of 6% return on in your investment. Um, how big would that have to be if you wanted uh, half a million dollars in that account 20 years from now? So again, I will leave you to that, um, and we will stop the video now.